started your first business? Trying to figure out what to do next or how to actually get customers and make sales? Here are 20 marketing tips to help you get attention and get your business growing, starting with tip number one, pick your people. Before you even think about starting to promote whatever product or service or offer you're planning on launching, you first need to ask yourself one of the most important questions in all of business. Who cares and why? I guess that's two questions. You need to be able to answer the question of who are the people that need whatever it is that you're selling in their life and what's it gonna do for them? Understanding your audience and the customers you're trying to attract isn't just about knowing their age or gender or geographic location. The real secret to success here is deep diving into their wants, their needs, their pains, their habits, their behaviors. It's about making them think, wow, did they make this just for me? See, one of the biggest secrets in business is that you're often able to 10X your business's profits just by changing to focus on a different segment of the market, or in other words, changing the people that you're choosing to serve and sell to. Here's the deal. Whether we like it or not, people do judge a book by its cover. And your business's brand is that cover that customers see and makes them form an impression about you. Good, bad, or fugly. So it's important to control the narrative. Take control and decide what kind of image you want to put forward right from the start. So ask yourself, is your business more James Bond or Mr. Bean? Bert or Ernie? Batman or Robin? Catwoman or woman with too many cats? Figure that out, because consistency is key. Each email, tweet, and social media post should sound unmistakably you. I love me a good meme. <laughs> Classic. But social media these days is so much more than just funny cat videos or trying to hard sell someone into buying something. This is why probably the best piece of social media marketing advice that I can give you when you're just getting started is to figure out where your ideal customers are spending their time online and then dive in there. Engage, ask questions, answer questions, start discussions. Social media success today is not about being everywhere, all the time, doing all the things in all kinds of random locations, and more about being targeted and focused and spending your time only where your ideal customers are present and active. If there are people out there actively searching on Google for solutions to a problem that your business solves, then SEO, search engine optimization, is a powerful tactic. It's the digital equivalent of placing your store on the busiest street in the city, rather than say in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Is there a store that sells water around here? SEO, however, isn't a one size fits all strategy, and there are some markets and industries that are usually too competitive to justify going after, like insurance and credit cards, mortgages, or real estate. But if you're in a less competitive industry, have a local business or are a niche product or service, then a little bit of SEO could be your golden ticket. Imagine for a second spending five years of your life writing the best book that the world has ever seen. And then taking that book, putting it in a box, and hiding it away in your basement, never to be seen again. Sounds crazy, right? But that's exactly what happens when you create content, but then don't do any work to promote it, to share it on social media, to send it out in an email, or to do anything you can to make sure that people actually see it. There's a saying in marketing that content is king, but promotion is queen, and they rule the kingdom hand in hand. That sounds very poetic. Remember when everyone said email is dead? Well, the joke's on them. Because even today, in fact, especially today, as more and more people get burned out and jaded on social media, a well-crafted email can create connections, drive sales, and keep you top in your customer's mind. Email is still one of the highest return on investment producing marketing tools available, but the real power of email is the control that it gives you to reach your customers directly without hoping, wishing, and praying that the social media algorithms will smile favorably on your content. There's a saying in business that goes, your net worth is your network. Meaning, it's about who you know. It's about connections. And who you know can often outweigh what you know, especially if you're a good, kind, hardworking person. Because do you know who wants more of those kind of people in their lives? Yeah, everybody. In the early days, this might mean joining networking groups, attending conferences or local events, maybe going to seminars or just reaching out to other people in order to try to provide as much value as you possibly can. If you do this right by again being a good, kind, hardworking person that genuinely wants to help other people, the relationships you form here will pay you back a hundred if not a thousand times over. Feedback can be tough to take sometimes, especially when you're first getting started and you've yet to build up the tough leather skin of a grizzled veteran entrepreneur. 
But feedback is also often the mirror that shows your business's true reflection and can serve like free consulting from your customers. So embrace it, learn from it, make changes if they make sense, and then get back to work trying to provide the best products or best services possible. Another important thing to learn in business is that you can't be all things to all people all of the time. You need to find your business's sweet spot, your zone of genius, that area of specialty or expertise that you're able to dominate in, that one area or one thing that you're able to do better than pretty much everyone else. This is what gives your business a unique competitive advantage, something that you're truly able to excel at that your competitors just can't touch. The good news though, is that when you're clear on what you do and who you do it for, well, for everything else that someone comes to you for that you just don't want to offer, you're able to make referrals, recommendations, and join affiliate marketing programs so you can be compensated for the work that you pass along. One of the fastest ways to increase your revenue is to stop looking outwards for new leads and new customers and instead focus inwards on the existing customers that you already have and doing everything in your power to keep them happy and sticking around for as long as possible. Studies have shown that increasing customer retention rates by just 5% increases profits by 25 to 95%. In other words, customer loyalty is everything, but you can only get there by making it a priority and building it right into your core business model. Ever heard of the Titanic? They said it was unsinkable, and then it sank. Point is, even the best can fail. So while you definitely don't wanna spread yourself way too thin, you do always wanna make sure to diversify your marketing strategies to safeguard against unpredictable shifts in the market or customer behavior, or literally the million other things that could and probably will change. This is another reason I like email marketing as it puts you in control rather than the social media algorithms, but we already talked about that, so let's keep moving with this next tip. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then a video is worth a million words, maybe more. This isn't to say that text and audio and images no longer work. It's just that for most people, in most places, most of the time, video works better, like a whole lot better. Whether you're recording a product demo, a behind the scenes look at your business, or a fun introduction or educational piece of content, video allows you to deliver more information faster and in a format that both your audience and the algorithms absolutely love. The key to marketing success is to be able to put in one dollar and get back two, or five, or ten. Like a money-making machine, your marketing needs to deliver results, otherwise, what's the point? But the only way to do this consistently is to know your numbers. This means tracking and monitoring where your customers are coming from, understanding what they buy, when, and how much, and assigning values to each marketing activity your business engages in, so you can track what's working and what's not. If you're just getting started or struggling to figure out what your next best move is, then one of the best things you can do is simply take a look around and see what other people are doing. Not to copy them exactly, that's unethical, often illegal, and completely ineffective as the best that you can hope for is coming off as a second-rate copycat version of them, but for ideas, inspiration, and to help you map out a competitive position in the marketplace. For example, if they're slow, you could be fast. If they're cheap, you could be expensive. If they're full serve, you could be completely automated, do it yourself. Or you could just try to do whatever they're doing a little bit better by adding some other element that they may not have thought of before. Every business has to make trade-offs in their business model, choosing to prioritize one thing over another. And it's in these trade-offs and in these sacrifices that there are unique opportunities for you to excel at, capitalize on, and carve out your own unique position in the market. One of my favorite definitions of entrepreneurship is that entrepreneurs solve problems for a profit. Solve a big problem, make a lot of profit. Solve a big problem for a lot of people, make a lot more profit. Solve a big problem for a lot of people who need that problem solved right now, well, make a whole lot more profit and make it a whole lot more quickly. One of the biggest mistakes most new business owners make is trying to solve a problem that nobody really cares that much to solve or trying to overhype and oversell something in completely the wrong way. And whenever I see that happen, this line from the late great comedian Mitch Hedberg always pops into my mind. I, I saw a commercial that said, forget everything you know about slipcovers. So I did. <laughs> It's not that you can't sell something boring like slipcovers or plumbing services or industrial insurance. It's just that you need to position it in a way so that your marketing talks about how your offer is designed to solve a very real problem that people actually have and actually care about. 
In the beginning, do your best to connect with other brands, businesses, and influencers. This isn't quite like networking where the goal is to forge relationships, but rather to form collaborations and business partnerships where you're both working together towards some kind of common goal. A shared webinar, a guest blog post, or a mutual shout out or collaboration can go a long way into helping each other by tapping into each other's audiences. The key here though, especially when you're first getting started, is to be realistic and aim to find people at about the same level as you so that you're able to offer mutually beneficial relationships and collaborations. One of the most valuable things you can do in your business journey is spend time learning the proven marketing principles, fundamentals, and strategies that were just as relevant 10, 20, even 100 years ago as they are today and that are going to be just as important 100 years from now. Side note here, but this is what Marketing Insiders is all about, so I'll make sure to put a link up here on the screen as well as down in the descriptions below this video so you can check it out after if you're interested. And these principles are so important and so profitable because they're based on psychology and human behavior. And we, as humans, really haven't changed all that much in the past tens of thousands of years. We still avoid pain, seek pleasure, and do whatever we can to make sure that we feel safe and accepted by those around us. That said, the platform channels, and technologies we use to communicate all of this is dramatically different today than ever before in history, and it doesn't look like things are ever going to be slowing down. So to stay on top of changes and trends, make sure to subscribe to marketing newsletters, attend webinars, and always, always keep learning. Every business has something called a marketing funnel. Sometimes it's called a sales funnel, sometimes it's called a customer journey, but they're all pretty much the same thing. Which is the process of taking someone who has no idea who you are and has never heard of you before and guiding them through the entire process of becoming a lifelong loyal customer that loves you, loves what you do, and wants to tell everyone they know about just how great you are. And you are pretty great. So if you want your marketing to work better, faster, and be more profitable than you've ever imagined, then you need to grease that funnel good. Every click, every page, every step should be completely seamless, removing as much friction as you possibly can. The goal here is to make it as easy as possible for your customer to take the next step and to be able to actually buy something from you without running into roadblock after roadblock that causes them to get frustrated, give up, and go to your competitors instead. Today's customers have heard it all, seen it all, and have been burned by maybe not at all, but lots of it. Certainly enough times to be more jaded, skeptical, and cynical than ever before. This is why big, overhyped promises and unbelievable claims and spammy, scammy, icky feeling marketing isn't good for anybody. The alternative then is to be genuine, be real, be authentic in your marketing, on social media, and in your conversations with customers. People have kind of a sixth sense for detecting sketchy stuff, so never be afraid to be your true awesome self. Even the best and most compelling marketing messages in the entire world are rarely a one and done type of thing. One of the biggest reasons that so many businesses marketing completely fails is that they're simply not doing enough of it or not doing it for long enough. You don't just send one single email or write one single social media post and be completely done, make billions of dollars and retire to the beach. On average, and depending on what business market or industry you're in, you typically need around seven to 14 different touch points or interactions with a customer in order to get them to make a purchase. Of course, there is a right way and a wrong way to do this. The wrong way means wasting your time and money and energy and making all of your customers angry in the process. Yay, business. But the right way, that means more leads, more customers, and more sales. So to show you how to do things the right way, I've linked up a video right here that's gonna give you some of my best and most profitable marketing strategies. So make sure to tap or click that now, and I'll see you in there in just a second.